All right, welcome back, guys. If this is your first time watching, my name is Matt, and this is my 1950 Cat D4. This is the 46th video of me rebuilding this thing, and it's finally getting close. In this video, we're going to be focusing on getting the blade cleaned up and ready to go. Maybe time to buy a new hose. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. We'll start over here. First thing is this linkage. It's not bad. This is the cylinder linkage over here. The cylinder I want to completely clean out. Then there's also this grease fitting and there's another one over here. Some of this stuff's been welded up. I'm not sure why. So the only modification I'm gonna make to this blade starting out here is I'm gonna take this cylinder and move it over here and then move this thing over to the other side. This is not my idea, but someone posted it in the comments of the last video and I was so angry with myself when he posted that because it's such a good idea and I didn't even think of it. But, but the goal here is to have all the hydraulic routing much, much cleaner uh, before it came straight up and then it went underneath between the engine and the belly pan. And then it was attached to the brush cage over here somewhere. And then these are pointed forward. It was a disaster. So I, I, I'm seriously still angry about this, but this is a really, really good idea. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna have to weld like this right here. I think this is 5 8 inch plate. Uh, so I'm gonna have to weld this mount spot on. Maybe I'll do a little bit better job of getting this hole in here right. So it's not that sloppy, but This pin's actually in good shape. Oh, these aren't even tight. Oh, there's anti-seize on them. 
Okay, at some point, someone was caring for this machine. So there's some shims on here, and I believe this, the shims set the, like, how much slop there is in this ball joint. I'll worry about those later, I guess. What does this thing weigh, like 20 pounds? No, a little bit more than that. Oh! Yep. These are all. These also have anti-seize on them, so someone probably maybe re-shimmed these at some point or re-greased everything. Oh, the whole blade's gonna wanna tilt back. There we go. Whoa! Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I thought the fluid looked clean, but actually a fair amount of water just dumped out when I did that. So we might need to flush this one out. Well, not looking good. I don't know what the overall stroke is. It's probably really short, so I don't know how much more this comes out, but this is obviously where it was sitting and water was collecting inside of here. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, I was thinking maybe it doesn't really matter, but the blade was level with where this thing was. So if it needs to tilt either way, it's going to have to go in or out. Uh, this you might be able to polish up, but this, I think this pretty much means we're out of luck. Pretty big scratch right there too. Don't know if you can see that. I'm thinking, do I even want to waste time taking this apart? I already know that this rod is, needs to be fixed. It needs to be re-chromed. And it had water in it, full of mud. So, I mean, it needs to be resealed. Maybe I should just take it in. Probably be the best use of my time. Okay, in the last video, when I got the blade hooked up, when I started raising it at about a foot high, it made contact with this, this guard. You can see the spots right here. And I kind of asked, I got a lot of advice, very good advice from a lot of people. I really appreciate it. In my mind, this blade has done nothing wrong. It's actually, it's, it's a Caterpillar blade. It's meant to go on a 7U 60 gauge, 60 inch gauge. You can see right here, it's a type 4S. And the stock Caterpillar guard is, is actually like, it's, it's very, very, very tight in. Probably for that reason, I don't know. Just to get an idea of how much clearance there should be, uh, I kind of looked around. A subscriber actually sent me pictures of his. He had a stock guard with a 4A blade, which is, kind of the rounded one, and I'll, I'll throw some pictures up. But his closest distance was about less than three inches, probably about two, two and a half inches when the blade was raised. So that's what I should be shooting for for my spacing, which means my plan right now is to cut this thing back as far as I can. And I need to rename this channel, I think, to Pacific Northwest Sunk Cost Fallacy because I refuse to give up on this thing and I spent a lot of time on it so far. But I'm gonna cut it back as far as I can, and if that doesn't work, I'm just gonna to have to remove it, and I'll keep looking for a stock cat guard, but I have been unsuccessful so far. Three and a quarter. Let's come over a sixteenth at the top. Really precise operation we got here. It's 11. So if I cut on the outside of this line, it actually on both sides lines up perfectly where I boxed it in before. I think that was two videos ago. Let's see, you got some old surveying stakes. All right, I'm just gonna score it uh, and then I'll get all the stuff off. But.
trick here is you use the other side of the survey stake that's still flat and you don't have to use two stakes. And by trick, I mean horrible thing that I'm doing right now. Before I take this back off, there's one other thing I want to address, and that is adding hydraulic fluid to here is, is going to be difficult. Right here. Kind of clip the angle iron there, that's okay. That took a while to drill. This hole is actually big enough to reach in here and then screw this thing, so. Shred my hand if I use this hole. <clears throat> Come on now. There we go. Good thing I painted this. I've got a lot of grinding to do on this. But it should line up pretty well with this boxing. And three, 12 and two, so we're within a 16th. Not good enough to build a boat, but probably okay for a bulldozer.
yeah, it goes on easier. And it weighs a lot less. I think I may have nailed it. Not bad looking for uh, <laughs> spending an hour with a grinder on it. this point it's right here if this is sitting completely flush then we should be good there we go I'm gonna grind this out just a little bit. It's a little too close for my comfort. This side's okay though. A lot more space there. Mostly good. So I'm going to fully weld everything in here. I'll uh, catch you after this is all done. How many more times do I have to do this? This is a good solid eighth of an inch of clearance. Tons of clearance here. I'm gonna have to bend this front thing. So, so about 11 inches, no, oh. yeah, this is way off. Ideally, I'd put this in the press to straighten it out, but it's way too big for that. So I don't know. If this works, this is gonna be like the worst thing I've ever done. 
kind of working. Now it's coming back though. All right, right there, nice and spread out. This might help it flex a little bit more. Oh, yeah, it's definitely going down. It's deflecting more. This side, which I haven't touched yet, it's way out, but that one's a lot closer. So I'm gonna spend some time here, just kind of going back and forth. Heat would help, but it's so hard to heat this thing with all these holes in it, that by the time this is heated up, that's like ice cold, so. I don't know, this is, this is not ideal. Let's see here. Finding the right angle to bend this thing at. Okay. That's, that's pretty close. That's within a couple of degrees here. I think we're within, that's close enough for this, for this step at least. So, See how crooked this thing is. Please don't fall. Please don't fall. I think I can make that work pretty nice. It's pretty flat on there. Got it mostly centered on here. I mean, this thing isn't straight, so. Just doing the best I can. Got about maybe an eighth plus an inch on each side, but the outside kind of bows, so whatever, it should be good.
So I made this outside hole 17, 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna use an actual one half on the inside just to give myself a little bit of space. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I'm pretty sure we're gonna be fine on clearance here. Uh, I mean, since we're basically flush, the only other question is on this bend here, there is some space back here. So we'll have to see what the blade does. If it hits this bend, I don't know what, to, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think we are touching right here. That's fine for now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and bolt it all down and then I'll just grind the inside of this area out. This area is kind of dented in right here. Okay, I'm not gonna work on this anymore until I can test fit the blade and I can't do that until the cylinder is done re being rebuilt, so. Got it started primed here, but before I prime over here, I need to address this. So this is what an unmolested linkage is supposed to look like. Uh, there's these the steel welded on here and then it looks like they drilled and put in these bushings on either side and they do appear to be somewhat hardened not super hard but uh, the pin that goes in here is not hard I checked these so clearly the pin's supposed to wear and then hopefully these don't I'm, I'm guessing I'm not an expert on this anyway compare the bushing sticking out right here over to the other one the the bushings are still in here but they've torched out the inside and if I had a guess, they thought they were gonna be clever and put the, the cylinder for the tilt blade back on here because it's, it's a wider fit. And then they figured out that they don't have enough stroke to actually run the tilt because it is a very short stroke cylinder. So then they welded this on. Now the spacing on this rod over here is, is a bit thinner. So it, would, it is gonna wobble around in here. So I did just get some spacers that I can run on either side and take out some of that wobble. Uh, fortunately, the inside of the bushing is still okay, even though it looks really bad where they torched it on the outside, that should be fine. I'm not gonna worry about that. The reason I'm bringing this up is, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna move the tilt cylinder from here over to the other side for two reasons. One is the hydraulic routing before for the cylinder went like up the brush cage and then underneath the engine. It makes a lot more sense to have it over there. And two, the welding on here, uh, I'll have to do this with my cell phone so you can see up close. It's completely cracked and I've painted over it. It's still cracked. You can tell it's cracked in there. They didn't have enough heat. It looks like, and it's just, it's a mess. So it's, you know, probably close to breaking anyway. Now, had I been smart when I took the cylinder and be rebuilt since the rod was bad on it anyways, and they even told me they were going to probably just replace the rod. I could have done the dimensions, uh, instead of mounting it up here, I could have had them lengthen the rod so it would mount here just be like a you know a squared plus b squared equals the c minus i got in math this old one is just a mild steel 5 8 inch plate so this is a brand new one and three quarter pin it's it's up to tolerance and it's just you can see how loose it is the one over here is still pretty tight though and this one's still pretty tight too you know remember how old this thing is it's pretty good Okay, so for the new mount point for the tilt cylinder, I got some new 5 8 inch plate. And then I got some bushings. So these are hardened. I think they're C61 or C62 bushings. The trick is going to be getting this all lined up. You know, I need a hole that's equal on both of these plates that's perfectly aligned. And then it needs to be straight with the front of the blade, uh, you know, perpendicular. The only thing I was worried about is welding hardened to mild steel. I haven't really done that before. I did have a spare bushing from an unused project laying around. This is the same hardness. I think it's even the same brand of bushing. And I've welded it just up right here on this just mild steel angle iron. And I've been really rough on this thing. I've been, you know, pulling on it. I've put it through the, uh, you know, into the oven for 500 degrees and then down to the freezer about 10 times. Been hitting on it and it's just, it's very strong. It has not cracked. 
I don't know how comprehensive of a test all that was, but it's just, it's, it seems very strong. I even, I mean, I fill, I fill in this giant hole right here and uh, it seems to be holding. It did take a few attempts to get this right, by the way. And the trick seemed to be, I heated this up. Well, first of all, I prepped it really, really well uh, all around the, the welding edge. And then I, let, I heated it up with the MAP torch to about five or 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And then once it was nice and good and hot, then I welded it and it was very successful. I'm using cedar because I have a lot of leftover fencing boards. Should be good. Oh yeah. Whoa. The outside diameter of these bushings is two and a quarter exactly. So if you had the hardware, you could just drill a two and a quarter hole. I don't have anything around here that's gonna be able to do that. That's my alignment hole. Made a lot of mistakes on this cut. I was going way too fast. And then so I had to freehand some of this side. The side where I was doing slower, it worked out a lot better. So the next one, I think this will still work though. Just gonna be a lot of grinding. a lot better just take your time they even hardly even burn that beautiful Okay, so obviously this one's a lot better because I knew what I was doing when I was cutting it. This one's pretty rough. But the goal here is to align these and the single bushing should pass all the way through. Nice. Okay.
Okay, well the weld went in nice. A couple spots here where I had to stop and start and then there was pinholes, so I just filled them in. Doesn't look pretty, but you know, for the most part, A lot of hole to fill right here, but I'll do the best I can. Same thing on this one, a lot of stop and starts. It's really hard to kind of weld in a circle around this thing, so. Totally flush right here. It's obviously flush in the vise. Drops right in. Was I wasting time setting up my drill press to be perfectly straight and then dealing with all that wood nonsense to cut it out? Possibly, but uh, same thing with target shooting. Aim small, miss small. Unfortunately, I don't have the tilt cylinder here right now. It's still getting its rod re-chromed. I did call the shop up though and had not measure the width of the mounting area and it was two and three quarters. It is about the width right between here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it with the this part sticking outward. Actually this would go like this. So basically the spacing here will be two and three quarter and it'll still line up with the stock spot here. And uh, hopefully look a little bit better than the other side. Maybe I should uh, contour this too. Let's see how we do that. Something like, and then maybe a little bit of a curve here. Am I doing too much hillbilly stuff in this video? I apologize. Taking the channel to all new lows here. Let's do it like that. Sure. I did kind of cut these down at a 45 on both sides on the bottom to help with the welding. Because it's going to be, uh, this is a pretty thick metal. I'm not sure how thick this is, but uh, I'm going to have to turn the old welder up to 11 for this one probably. Seven. Still not squared. Okay, so the problem I'm having is even though this is these are totally straight with this, these are tweaked. I can measure between here and back here, and I can tell that this bracket is not straight. It's it's kind of bent over a little bit. So I would like this one to be straight. So we'll find a different way to align it.
Okay, I got this piece of plumbing pipe ground down to about 283. So that's gonna give me about 80 thou <clears throat> of space, which is either probably way too much or way too little. But uh, that's what we're going with. Oh man, this thing is bent, the original mount. That's pretty tight, okay. I found this thing on the old tiling kit. I've done some more measurements and basically there's so much slop in here, I'm wasting my time. So I have it straight with respect to like this distance and the distance on the other side. I'm just gonna go ahead and weld it in. As long as this is clamped in here, it'll fit. There should be plenty of space. And this pin rotates fine in here, so it should be all fairly squared up. Make sure this fits. Oh. oh, that's nice. Okay, so that weld, there's a, it looks a little bit stronger in my opinion there. The inside, I just, I can't get in there. So it looks pretty bad, especially on that vertical section. It's just, I, I can't get the gun in there to, to weld it. I guess with a stick welder, I could do better. This side, there was more area to weld to. So that's why this side's bigger. And then once again, in there, it looks pretty bad. Losing my light here. but. I think that's as good as it's going to get for me. Got it primed up here. Anyway, it's done. Full disclosure, I have a goose out here tonight. I've been hatching these and unfortunately in the last batch only one hatched and if you know anything about geese, they, they don't like to be alone, so. All right. Uh oh. This is still decently tight. So I did, these shims did follow this from the other side. I'm assuming that the wear is all in this ball, not on the inside. I guess we'll find out. The old tilt bracket is not allowing this to move. This is gonna be noisy, so I'll move the goose. Still in here? Into a safe location here. They like to be covered. That wasn't too bad.
Oh, that's perfect. Oh, I gotta put these shims in first, right? With the screw, I forgot about that. This is pretty nice. It's been four weeks now and I still do not have the tilt cylinder back, but I really, really wanted it back so I could dry fit everything make sure I have space on the front guard. And I also need to measure for new hydraulic lines. So I think I'm gonna have to do it the hard way. I'm not able to start the tractor and pull it forward into the blade because upstairs, the wife is holding some kind of antiques bazaar or sale or something. And apparently antique customers don't like the smell of diesel and soot, which this tractor is basically an antique. So it seems kind of hypocritical to me, but Back to the furniture dollies. Keep my feet from coming under this thing. Can't think of any way this is gonna go bad. Just set it on the that. There we go. Oh yeah, it's rolling. Oh, that works even better. Back and crank. There we go. All right. Feels off. Okay. Okay, let's check the spacing out because that's going to set the tone for the rest of this video. Oh. And so about this height in the last video, I was maybe a little bit higher and it was just about to touch. And this was the old spot, obviously, because this is where the, so if I measure from there to the ribbing, and it's gonna be hard for you to see, but I'll just trust me on those measurements. Just, I can't get the, all right, there we go. Three inches, three inches of spacing. So we've picked up at least two and a half, which makes sense because I cut two and a half off. So let's keep raising this thing up and see what happens. There is some leakage down here, and that's because I topped off this, the hydraulic tank, and there's still air in it, so when I, when I pulled it in, it's, it's leaking out around the cap because it's loose. Still a ton of space. We are at max height right now, and I know that because the cylinders are all the way back and I ended up hooking the lift onto the cylinder. So this is as high as it's ever gonna go, and it's level, which I think level is worst case because when it tilts, it's gonna come out when it goes down. I've kind of tilted it back way. I got a jack on here right now. So at this height, yeah, it's really close. It's like a quarter of an inch there. I'm not gonna lie, that's probably, fairly close although at this height you're not gonna you're not gonna be like you know pushing dirt at this height so i think that's okay because when i lower it more it's there's plenty of space whoa got quite a few comments actually saying that this is the wrong blade or this blade does not fit but this blade this whole setup is all factory cat and it's all meant for a d4 of this you know width I've moved this around. There's plenty of space on the tracks. It's not gonna hit the tracks. This blade is meant for this dozer with this blade frame and the cylinders. All this stuff is cat. The only thing that's not cat is this radiator guard, which is why that's what I'm modifying. So I believe the fittings are about right here. 
and then run over to a hard point on the brush cage. And then we can run it across, you know, with some clamps or something here. And then there's another pipe right here for the brush cage. There should be room to sneak it in right here. This is a lot of bends, but the cylinder is barely used, right? Just tweaked up and down a little bit. It's also occurring to me now that the brush cage mount, which is these four holes, is going to conflict with this. But uh, we're going to leave that as a problem for future mat. Oh, yeah. This may actually be the last time I have to take this off ever. I guess I just jinxed it. The top bolt holes are really hogged out, but hopefully these new ones that I drilled should bring it all into, into alignment. Plastic sawhorses were a bad choice. Last thing I'm going to do here is cut these sections out. And that's right where those ribs go. And I know there's clearance, there's a quarter inch clearance. I just, that's just too close for me. So if they were going to hit, they would hit right here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out just to be safe. It's going to look a little bit weird on here, but I don't care. Maybe. Okay, it's on. The couple spots that I had to grind down, they look close, but they aren't touching at least around these holes. And a way I can tell it's not touching is I can tap on it. And it kind of, you can hear the vibration, maybe not on the camera, but but compare that to tapping on the pump. There we go. How do I know when it's full?
Oh, there it goes. It's coming out of this bolt hole. Okay, well, not much else I can do here, so I'm just gonna throw the blade back on and still waiting on the cylinder, but uh, everything else is ready to go. Oh, forgot about this guy. Now, I know I'm gonna get asked about greasing this stuff because this wasn't greased, none of this was greased, and the manual doesn't say to grease it, so I'm just following what the manual says. I didn't put grease fittings into these new bushings. I, didn't, I just followed what was being done. I'm not an expert, I just followed what was being done. Now, the spots I haven't greased that the manual says to grease, I keep forgetting about, is here, there, and there, those three pivot points on both sides. So I'll be sure to do that. I need new, I'm out of fittings actually, because I need to replace these fittings. They're pretty gross in there. But everything else is just supposed to be dry, and I'm guessing it's because if you have it all greased up, you know, dirt's gonna get in there and just gonna grind everything away. Unfortunately, the video is gonna have to end right here. I am still waiting on that cylinder to get rebuilt. The shop had to send it out to get rechromed. They told me, five, like, that was five weeks ago. They told me it should be here soon, so we'll see. I also ordered some new hydraulic lines, and those will be here in a couple days. Originally, I was planning on putting the brush cage on next and the winch rope, but I think a better idea is actually going to be to get the blade done and then just take it out in the next video and maybe put some access roads into my property just to you know flush out any other problems because once the brush cage goes on, it's not going to fit in the shop again and I'd rather you know not have to do any heavy wrenching outside. There's going to be a lot of that on the excavator, so I'd, you know let's, let's finish it all off inside and then get the, the brush cage on. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it, guys, and I will be back hopefully soon. We'll see.